Let's get set up for my December reading journal and have a little look at what I've been reading in November as well. Hi, it's Erin. Let's have a cozy little 20 minutes together. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I was admittedly pretty behind on my reading journal up until now, basically, so thank you for motivating me to stay on top of remembering what I've read. I haven't done a lot from my Maybe Next page. I am currently reading In the Weeds by BK Borison. It's a reread. I love that book so much. The others, not yet, but I have read a bunch of other stuff, so I guess it's been a mood readery month. I love my star rating stamp and I have a link to it as well as everything else that I'm using in this video in the description in case you see anything and think that's a great idea, I should have that in my collection. It's so funny, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes wasn't even really on my radar. I knew the movie was coming soon, but I was looking for something to read and my library app had it available immediately, so I was like, sure, absolutely, let's start with that. I read The Hunger Games when I was in my early 20s and loved them and loved the movies as well, so I gave this one a go on audiobook and I really liked it. I saw one of my friends has reviewed it on Goodreads and her entire review just says trash, four stars, and I was like, ha. Huh. I, funnily enough, also am giving it four stars. I don't know if I'd say trash. I definitely had a lot of revelations reading this book. I don't usually relay everything about the book that I'm reading to my partner, but for this one, I was pestering him constantly because he knows the source material, like he's read the Hunger Games books and watched the movies with me. And so I was like, and this, and this, and this, but also trying not to spoil things about the movie because we'll probably go see it together. <laughs> oh, it was fun. There was something about the way the narrator pronounces the main character's name that uh, grated on me a little bit because it sounds like a body part, but anyway, we won't worry about that. I will come back and fill out the actual review spreads for these all in one go when I have the headspace for it because I like to listen to audiobooks while I'm setting up my journal as well. But when I'm writing out the review spread, I have to turn off the audiobook because obviously I can't write words and listen to words at the same time. I'm not that talented. I've used my HP Sprocket to print off some book covers that I'm going to need to put on various pages. I have a short about how I use the HP Sprocket to print my reading journal covers for all of the books that I've read, so I'll link to that in the description in case you are interested in that. Flipping back to my November Reads page, I'm adding The Takedown by Lily Chu. Absolutely loved this one. It's on Audible as an Audible original. It only just came out in November. It's a very recent one. I've also read Lily Chu's two previous books, The Stand-In and The Comeback, and they were both fantastic. I recommend them so much. They're usually set in Toronto, Canada, and they usually have characters with some kind of an Asian family background heritage as well. So really, really interesting stuff. This one is Hunger Pangs True Love Bites by Joy Demora. I'm not filling in the star rating for that because I was actually listening to it at the time that I was recording this. So I hadn't quite finished it, but I was close to it and I finished it while I was recording this video. So we will go back and fill out the star rating for that later. Fun fact about that one. It was the book club book for my channel members discord for this month, which was so amazing. Thank you, James, for choosing this book. I really enjoyed it. We'll talk more about it later when we're doing review spread things, but for now I added the book cover for my Literary Ladies book club as well, which is one that I have IRL with friends that I meet up with and we have dinner and talk about books. The November pick for the Literary Ladies was actually mine. It's The Binding by Bridget Collins. I went straight into that one as soon as I finished Hunger Pangs, so I've nearly finished that book as well, but not quite yet, so I can't give you a total rating, but I am very much enjoying it. The Cruel Prince I read right at the end of October, and then I went straight into The Lost Sisters, technically on October 31st, but I didn't have space for it within my October spread, so I tucked it in here. It's a novella that kind of goes concurrently with the events of The Cruel Prince from a different character's perspective, and I hate that character so much. So much. I can't even tell you. I wanted to add a small cover of the binding to my maybe next page as well because I will be finishing that this month definitely. And I also read Twisted Love by Anna Huang. Not so keen on this one. It was fine. I don't know if I would continue this series though. Don't know if billionaire romance is really my thing, you know? I have been doing the occasional kind of arty reading journal review spread. I did one for The Cruel Prince, it's not in any videos because it was kind of after I'd shot the October video, uh, but I haven't been doing as many of them because I'm trying to conserve pages for my reading journal. I am going to run out. I think I am just going to squeeze the rest of the year into this book because I tend to average sort of between seven and nine books a month thanks to audiobooks and the fact that I like to listen to them faster than normal speed. This really easy layout I have been doing all year anyway for books that I either didn't feel inspired to give them a, an arty journal spread or ones that I just didn't feel like I had the right stickers and washi tape to complement. 
It's a lot less effort than a fully decorated book review spread, so I really recommend this as a starting point if you're new to keeping a reading journal. Not trying to go too hard on every book, just making special layouts for the ones that you really want to make special layouts for, and maybe sticking to something simpler like this. I've been using the same setup for, for these for the entire year. I don't know if I'm going to do the title of the book in stamps next year because, oh man, that's gotten a little bit wearing. I'm a bit sick of it, you know? I'm probably just going to write it by hand, maybe some pretty hand lettering. Not sure. I am going to be posting my new reading journal setup in the beginning of December and I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't set it up yet, but I have some ideas and I'm very excited. I am going to be using that mustard colored Archer and Olive B5 journal that I got in one of the subscription boxes last year. Last year? This year? It's still this year. Calm down, Erin. Wow, it's still November. Chill. The one I'm using currently is from String and Space. It's their star.grid A5 journal, and I have really liked it, and it has been the perfect size for the amount of reading that I've done this year and from September to the end of last year. That's all fit in this one journal. So I'm looking forward to having a bit more space on a B5 page. Like, you know, the page is just bigger. I've never used a journal that big before since I started bullet journaling seven odd years ago, approximately. So I think it's going to be a very interesting journey for me. Now I'm going to jump in and write my actual thoughts on each of these books in the pages that we've just set up for them. If you don't want spoilers, I recommend that you don't read what I'm writing, just to let you know. The Lost Sisters was a novella, so I really only needed half the page to write everything I thought about it. I'm going to leave that blank, and if there's anything else that will fit there through the rest of the year, I will probably just write it in there. I don't really care about chronology at this point. While I'm filling out the rest of my review pages, I thought this would be a good opportunity to tell you a little bit more about the Page Mages Book Club, which is the brand new book club that we've just started with my Hand Lettered Heroes channel members in our private Discord server. Each month we're choosing a new book and we're all going to read it together. If we want to, it's totally optional, you don't have to, but you have the option to read the book each month. Each book gets its own channel in the server as well, so we can talk about the book as we're reading. And then at the end of the month, I'm trying my best to organize it so we can have a little voice chat and talk about the book in real time as well, because I think that's the part of my in-person book club that I really, really love the most. So I want that for everybody in our digital book club too. But you do have to be a channel member at the Hand Lettered Heroes level. So if you would like to join in the fun, you can head to my channel. There's a link in the description that you can use to join. There might also be a join button under the video, or you might need to go to my channel and click on the join button. Then head over to the community page once you've joined, and there will be a link to the Discord server in there in the posts that are just for the eyes of the channel members. So come and join the fun. I would absolutely love to have you. It's a very lovely, welcoming community. We're all very accepting and warm. And also we talk about stationery and bullet journaling in the Discord too, which is also a fun time. So potentially a lot of interest crossover there. So if that sounds good to you, I would absolutely love to have you hit the join link down below and come and join the party. It's going to be so good. That's about it for the review spreads thus far for the month of November. One thing I haven't done in ages is go way back to the start of this setup and fill out just my general overall books read in 2023 list. I'm pretty behind on that, so we've got a fair few to fill in here. Also just going to flip through the rest of these pages and check if there's anything else that I need to fill out. I haven't read Eye and Flame yet, but I am going too soon. Don't you worry about a thing. This is going to be the takedown that's going to go in that space, but I'm going to save printing the cover until I have some other covers to print alongside it. For now, I'm going to leave a few pages blank for the rest of November and we're going to get stuck into this December reading journal setup and I'm going to make my table a little bit extra pretty because I want to feel festive. Why not? I love my stars. This PET tape is the basis for my December theme. It's the Fireside Wide PET Tape from the Washi Tape Shop. I love their stuff. It's from their Christmas collection this year. They have just come out. I have a discount code in case you would like to grab this for yourself. You can use my code ErinSmith10. 
it will get you 10% off everything at the washi tape shop and I will make a little affiliate commission as well for sending you their way. I'm also teaming it up with this text washi tape that's got this beautiful warm tone to it. This one's actually from the Petals and Parchment set which I've had for ages. It was designed by my queen Anna from Journal Away, one of my absolute favorite bullet journal content creators. And it's kind of like a textbook with descriptions and official names of flowers and things like that. I like just using it for texture. <laughs> so I'm using it in each corner and I'm going to layer it up with little vignettes from the PET tape from the washi tape shop, little glowing Christmas tree things, very cozy vibes, which is funny because it's getting really hot in my city, but I, I want to pretend, you know, I want to live vicariously through my journal, I guess. And I'm also using some of these paint stroke dry brush gold accents that are from a sticker book that I got from Spotlight, but it's from a brand, I think it's called American Crafts. And I believe you can get this at Joanne in the States. So I will link to the Joanne link as well as the Spotlight link in case you are Australia or US based. <laughs> this is going to be my December cover on the left side and my reading stats page on the right side. So I need some space for planning, but I don't need too much space. So I'm happy to really take up a good chunk of each of these corners with some decoration. I'm just making sure that I have the washi tape, the gold streaky vinyl sticker, and then a little bit of the PET tape represented in each corner. Then I have this amazing ornate letter washi tape that I got from Journal Say a little while ago. I haven't used it yet, this is the first time. This is a really fun way to have like sticker letters to go in your journal. I feel like the way these usually get done is you get a packet with maybe two of each letter and it's never enough. This way you get the whole alphabet several times over, which means you can kind of cherry pick through and find all the letters you need. It does mean you end up with a lot of off cuts, however, that you kind of need to work out how to deal with. I ended up wrapping mine around one of those plastic washi tape cards so I can continue using them in the future without losing it, you know? Ordinarily, I'd probably just use one of these for the first letter of a word and then stamp the rest. And I will do that elsewhere throughout the layout, but I wanted the December cover to have this like boom impact. So much pretty ornate. It's Christmas, right? You can get away with it at Christmas time. So I've done the whole word December and I like it. I think it looks cute. forever flipping back to my previous setups for different months to see what my reading stats were that I track because I can never remember them off the top of my head. But at the moment I'm tracking the number of books that I complete in the month, the total number of pages read, the average rating of all of the books that I read in that month, the standout book for me that month, so the one that has stayed with me the most or that I enjoyed the most or that I identified with the most, whatever the situation is there. Then just a little breakdown of the genres that I read and also the format. So mostly audiobook and ebook for me. And I get all of this data because I track all of my reading through Storygraph, which is an app on my phone. I couldn't have all of that data so easily if not for Storygraph. So it's really helpful. I do still use Goodreads, but Storygraph is a little bit more user friendly, I think. Now we carry on to the maybe next and the December reads pages. This is just where I track the books that I actually read. You saw a little bit of this earlier in the November spreads. On the left side, I'll have the maybe next, which is my kind of gentle name for my TBR because I think to be read sounds like too much pressure, you know? And I'm very much a mood reader, so sometimes I don't read any of the books on my maybe next list for the month. And sometimes I read all of them and sometimes most of the time, honestly, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. The right page facing opposite the maybe next page is where I'm going to put all of my December reads. So anything that I didn't set out to read in December that I did read will go on that page. For now, we're just going to decorate everything here, get it all set up and ready to go. So it will kind of just be a blank decorated cavernous page full of nothing for now, just pretty. But we will come back and work out what my December maybe next list will look like and set that up together as well. So stick around for that. It tells you a lot about me, doesn't it? That it's like function later, pretty first.
This one is my Literary Ladies Book Club spread. It is where I like to have a little decorated themed page that goes with the others in the theme for the book club book that we choose for the Literary Ladies. We have not chosen our December read yet, but December will be the first anniversary of the Literary Ladies. We started doing this a year ago with a Christmas book, so I dare say we will be reading a Christmas book again. And it's kind of funny because last year none of us really liked the book that we chose. Hopefully this year we will do something that we all enjoy a little bit more. Ordinarily, we take turns choosing the book, but I think for this one, we might all throw a bunch of ideas into a hat and just pick one out. So if you have recommendations for Christmas books that you've loved, please let me know in the comments. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Let's have a little flip through here while it's all untouched and not yet filled in. This is what the theme for December is looking like. I'm very happy with it. It's so cozy and calming, but still kind of minimal. And I like that about it. Let's flip back one page here and get started on this maybe next list for December. So I'm going to pick three Christmas books that I had on my might read list from like the overall. I've got Inner Holidays by Christina Lauren. I've got Christmas Presents by Tara DeWitt and The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Leese. I've also got the most recent from one of my favorite Aussie authors, Lola in the Mirror from Trent Dalton. I'll also have both of the book club December picks on this maybe next page eventually too, but I don't know what they are yet. So obviously I can't put them on the page if I don't know what they are yet, but these are the ones that I'm going to maybe read next. Maybe, maybe not, but maybe. I also like to have my star rating on this page so that it's like a, a really good visual all-in-one representation. Not a lot of text, just kind of visual representations of what I thought of books. I don't know, I just really like how this page looks when it's all completed and filled in. So lots of space there for more books, obviously on the maybe next. Heaps of room for anything that I read in December. Hoping to get a lot read in December because hopefully it will be a chill month, but we'll have to see. And obviously there's a space on the Literary Ladies page for a big book cover for that one too. This is how many pages I have left for the rest of the year. Not a great many, but I think there will be enough to get me through December, so that's worked out actually really beautifully. Right at the back I've got some pen swatches and some ideas for the next journal. There's nothing in the pocket apparently. That's actually it for this journal for the whole year. Please let me know if you'd like to see a flip through. Look how chunky it is. This book has held up so well. The spine hasn't given me any issues at all. I haven't lost any ribbon bookmarks. I've really enjoyed using this one. Thank you so much to the folks at String and Space for sending me this journal. It used to have stars, like metallic star patterns on the page edges. You can barely even see them anymore, but it has been so well loved. My 2024 reading journal setup isn't out yet for you to watch, but you can see my 2023 reading journal setup here at the link in the top right corner. And under that is a playlist of all of my reading journal videos I have ever made. See you again soon. Bye.